We begin in October 1967, when the Nigerian troops undertook the Operation Tiger Claw against the Biafran army. The operation was part of a series of military onslaught that would ultimately lead to the capture of major Biafran cities and causes Lieutenant Colonel Odumegu Ojuku to flee to the Ivory Coast. We will examine the three final operations in this video. Welcome to Hispo Media. Operation Tiger Claw was a battle that took place in the major port city of Calabar between the Nigerian army and the Biafran military forces during the Nigerian Civil War. The battle took place between October 17th and 19, 1967. The Nigerian troops were led by Colonel Benjamin Adekunle, while the Biafran's forces were led by Major Oboji. Prior to the invasion of Calabar, the Nigerian army had been successful in forcing the invading Biafran army to retreat from the Midwestern region in late September 1967, while also managing to capture the Biafran capital of Enugu on October 4th. The Nigerian 3rd Marine Commando Division under the command of Colonel Benjamin Adekunle disembarked from Wari aboard numerous warships bound for the port city of Boni, which was captured on October 7th. The Nigerians now plan to use Boni as a launch pad for invading the city of Calabar. In October 1967, a Nigerian Navy Armada on the naval campaign left the port of Boni en route to Calabar. Inside the ships were the heavily armed troops of the Nigerian 3rd Marine Commando Division. The Biafran's 9th Battalion under Major Ogboji was in charge of defending Calabar as well as the entirety of Biafra's southeast coast from Opobo to the Cameroon border at the time. On October 17, Biafran's fortifications in the beaches of Calabar came under intense aerial and naval bombardment. The cement factory in Calabar was captured by the Nigerian 8th Battalion less than 24 hours after Major Ochefu's troops disembarked from Lokoja. Later on the same day, Colonel Benjamin Adekunle and other members of the Nigerian 3rd Battalion arrived on the beach at Calabar. Despite being outnumbered, the small but stubborn Biafran resistance was able to maintain control over a few locations of Calabar and the surrounding regions. After Nigerian troops started to enter Calabar from three different positions, a bloody hand-to-hand -hand fighting broke out. In the midst of the fighting, Major Oboji suffered severe injury and was evacuated to Umuahia, while his outnumbered forces withdrew to a fresh defensive position on the outskirts of Calabar. Lieutenant Colonel David Okafo replaced Oji and decided that he would not counter-attack until he was reinforced by the Biafran's 7th Battalion under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Adigio. The 7th Battalion at first refused to embark to Calabar because their machine guns had been sent to Biafran forces fighting against Major Muhammad Buari and had been left with single shot bolt action rifles. Colonel Festus Akaga replaced Lieutenant Colonel Adigio once the 7th Battalion finally agreed to take on their assignments. The Biafran 7th Battalion landed in Calabar on October 19, where they were welcomed by armored cars from Nigeria. Colonel Akaga informed President Odumegu Ojuku of the dire need for support in Calabar and the hopelessness of the situation there. Ojuku deployed newly recruited white mercenaries to Calabar in the face of impending destruction, but they were met with strong Nigerian firepower right away. After suffering unusually high casualties, the remaining mercenaries retreated north and fled Biafra, never to return again. All the captured Nigerian forces were made to surrender their weapons the day after the surrender. After Operation Tiger Claw, the two sides were made at a stalemate until the capture of Potakot. Benjamin Atekunle and Kondel Moritara Mohamed stormed the Biafran city of Oweri, Aba, and Umohia a day after Potakot was captured. This would mark the beginning of Operation OAU. The Operation OAU involved sporadic clashes to capture Oweri, Aba, and Umohia. Over 25,000 men may have died in the operation on both sides. Despite being outnumbered, the Biafran army managed to hold on to Umuahia and subsequently retake the cities of Oweri and Aba. 
Colonel Benjamin Adekunle, commander of the 3rd Marine Commando Division, started formulating plans to invade the Biafran heartland and seize all remaining important cities in April 1968. After a resolute Biafran defense, Adekunle's division arrived in Ikotekpende on April 14, after traveling north from their position in Calabar. The 3rd Division marched through the Niger Delta for 36 days before arriving on May 18 in the vicinity of Potakot. The 31, 32 and the 33 Battalion were in charge of the amphibious assault that the Nigerian Army and Navy launched after bombarding the city. The Biafran Army eventually withdrew as a result. On July 30, Colonel Adekunle started preparing to take control of Biafra's remaining major cities. He even made the audacious claim that he could take Oweri, Aba, and Umuahia within two weeks. The Nigerian army established positions along the Aba Umuahia Road in August 1968 and blocked any food shipments from reaching the city. Adekunle's strategy for gaining Aba was to surround the city, cut off shipments, and starve the city into submission. Two Nigerian battalions, along with their Soviet advisors, crossed the Imo River Bridge on October 24 and started moving towards Oweri. Under the command of the Welsh mercenaries, Major Taffy Williams, the Biafran 4th Commando Brigade launched themselves into the Nigerian attack. For three days, light machine guns and repeater rifle fire did not stop. Neither side gave an inch until the Biafrans ran out of ammunition and were forced to retreat to Aba. On September 2nd, Nigerian artillery started bombarding Aba as ground forces began to advance into the city while coming under intense Biafran fire. A bloody house-to-house -house fighting lasted for 12 days, Red Cross hospitals were overflowing with bodies before the last Biafran surrendered on September 14. The Nigerian 16th Brigade, led by Colonel E. A. Etuk, opened heavy artillery fire on the Biafran 14th Division on September 13. On September 17, the Nigerian 3rd Marine Division set out towards Omoya, but a division of Biafran forces intercepted them outside the city, sparking a fierce battle. On September 18, after a fierce five-day stand, the Biafran 14th Division abandoned fighting in Ahoba and Obinze and retreated from the city, leaving Oweri opened to Colonel Eto 16th Division. After Oweri's capture, Colonel Obugo Kalu was made commander of the 14th Division and Colonel Lambert Ihenacho was made commander of the 63rd Brigade. In a letter sent to Colonel Kalu, he states, your role in the Potako disaster is still fresh in the minds of people. You must clear the enemy from Obinze in 24 hours or submit resignation from the army. Only a few hours later, Colonel Kalu gave the order for a Biafran counterattack aided by the Obunigwe mine. This counterattack halted the Nigerian advances and resulted in the capture of Obinze. After taking control of Biafran positions on the banks of the Imo River, the 5th, 21st, 22nd and the 44th Battalion of the Nigerian 1st Division started moving northwards towards the Obiangu airstrip. The Biafran 63rd Brigade withdrew from the Obiangu airfield on September 22nd due to the swiftness of the Nigerian's assault, leaving most of its equipment to the Nigerian 2nd and 44th Battalions. The same day, the Biafran Major Joseph Achuzi attempted a counter-attack at the Obiangu airstrip but was swiftly repulsed by the Nigerian 2nd Battalion. On the 30th of September, the Nigerian 21st Battalion outflanked the defending Biafran 13th Division and captured Okigwe Town. In mid-September, the French President Charles de Gaulle openly voiced his support for the Biafran cause and began shipping weapons to Biafra. The terrain around Omoha consisted of areas of vast jungles and rivers that were littered with miles and Biafran soldiers. For 14 days, the two sides exchanged gunfire and artillery, resulting in mass casualties on both sides. Colonel Adekunle radioed in that he needed reinforcement or his entire division would be at risk of annihilation, but the reinforcement never arrived. 
nearly 15,000 Nigerian soldiers had either been killed or wounded in Umuahia sector, and on the 1st of October, the 3rd Marine Division retreated to Port Harcourt while the 16th Division was left isolated in Oweri. Instead of pursuing the retreating Nigerians to Port Harcourt, the Biafran slowly made their way up the Aba Umuahia Road and managed to capture Aba on the 15th of October. Although Mohamed Shua's 1st Division successfully captured Okigwe and the Obiangu airstrip, the operation resulted in disaster for Adekunle's 3rd Marine Division in which it lost over 20,000 of its 35,000 soldiers and found itself in short supply of both men and food. While Yakubu Gowon was distracted by the anti-tax riot in western Nigeria, the Biafran Brigadier Alexander Madibu encircled Oweri, trapping the 3,000-man Nigerian 16th Division inside the city. For the next several months, attacks were launched by Biafran soldiers on Nigerian defensive positions around the city, which allowed them to inch closer to Oweri with every battle. On the 5th of December, the Biafrans launched a two-day offensive on Oweri, in which 50,000 rounds of ammunition, 300 mortars, 200 howitzer shells, and 20 anti-tank weapons were fired by the Biafrans. But the Nigerian 16th Division under Condel Eto managed to stay put in their original positions. On the 15th of January 1969, the Biafran 68th Brigade entered Oweri and forced the Nigerians within the city to retreat across the Otamini Bridge. Hungry and half naked Biafran soldiers discovered the Nigerian food and clothing supplies and decided to stay and have their fill. While the Nigerians regrouped and launched a counter-attack, causing the Biafrans to retreat. By 31st of March 1969, the Biafrans had control over 70% of Oweri, while the remaining 300 Nigerian soldiers fled the city on 25th of April. This would launch the Operation Tailwind. The final military conflict between Nigeria and Biafra took place between January 7 and 12th. 1970. The operation, which would be known as Operation Tailwind, took place in the town of Oweri and Uli, both of which were captured by Nigerian forces. The operation ended with General Odumegu Ojuku fleeing to Ivory Coast. On the 7th of January 1970, the 3rd Marine Commando Division, now under General Obasinjo, supported by the 1st Infantry Division to the north and the 2nd Infantry Division to the south launched their final offensive. The Biafran S Division under Captain Azoma Soya was operating along the Port Harcourt Elele Road. The division found itself cut off and disorganized due to a quick envelopment by the Nigerian 17th Brigade under Major Tomoye. The Nigerians now began making their advances on Oweri. On the outskirts of Oweri, Biafran's Lieutenant Colonel Lambert Ehenacho's 63rd Brigade came under withering attack by Major Tomoye's 17th Brigade, supported by 122mm Soviet artillery. In less than a day of fighting, the 63rd Brigade became overwhelmed by the Nigerian bombardment and were forced to surrender. While the Nigerians were preoccupied with attacking the 63rd Brigade, the Biafran leadership made their final meeting in which President Odumegu Ojuku announced his plans to go abroad in search of peace. Ojuku handed over the Biafran presidency to his vice president, Philip Effion, and placed all remaining Biafran troops under the command of Major Joseph Achuzi. On the night of January 1970, Major Timothy Uwa Tuegu escorted Ojuku to the Uli airstrip where he boarded his private jet and fled to the Ivory Coast. Immediately after Ojuku's departure, President Philip Effion called for a ceasefire to discuss the details of surrender. On January 12, Philip Effion, Joseph Achuzi, Ogbu Gokalu, and other Biafran officers made their way to Amichi and later Oweri to broadcast their final surrender to the Nigerian troops. There are two accounts about Timothy Umatwego's death in days following the surrender. One account by his former co-conspirator, Major Adewale Ademoyega, states, 
that he was tricked into attending a meeting at a hotel with federal officers of the 3rd Marine Commando Division at this meeting that was said to have occurred on January 15. He was summarily shot dead by vengeful officers personally aggrieved by the assassination of Brigadier Ademulegun and his wife during the 1966 Nigerian coup. An alternative account given by Colonel Obasanjo states that during the process of surrender, Unwatuegu unsuccessfully attempted to ambush him near Amichi. After this incident, he was said to have made his way for the Cameroon border and was later killed in a firefight with Nigeria's 1st Division. The truth about Major Unwatuegu's death is therefore not resolved to this day. For more on why Ojuku took arms against the Federal Republic of Nigeria, please check this video here. Remember to smash the like button, subscribe and enable notification for more videos. I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.